Hello. Thank you very much. I want to start off with a question for you guys, which is, what can you make in just one hour? You have about 15 seconds to think about it. Go. Okay, time is up. Um, who had about 15 ideas that you could create? <laughs> okay, that's nice. Three ideas? Okay, one idea? <laughs> no ideas? Come on, you can go forward. Okay, I imagine there were m more people without uh, ideas. Um, so, what happens is... Um, some of you probably have some brilliant ideas, but you cannot make them yet because we um, are here in this setting and uh, we are here to be inspired and have possibly a delayed action, a delayed creative action. Um, and some of you might have no ideas and stare blankly in, into space and uh, think, well, yeah, it's just one hour, so what could you make in, the, in, in one hour? So why do I ask this question? What is so important about this question? Well, I can divide it up into several words. Can. Can is about possibilities. What can you do? Um, and all the options that are out there. You put you into the position of an individual. What can you do? What is it? What are your skills? And what are your ideas? And so you are limited to yourself. Make is about creating about an action you can do, and um, about a creative action. One hour, well, that's a time limit, so it's a restriction. And 15 seconds is also a restriction. You just have 15 seconds to think about something you can do in one hour. So there's a whole process going on, actually. And this thought process of um, having an idea and going to action is all <laughs> kinds of, bless you, all kinds of steps in between this idea and put it in, putting it into action. So there are several limitations in this uh, question, which is um, one hour and you. And some limitations are good, and some limitations are um, and not so good. So um, the limitations are important to me, limitations uh, are important and uh, we need some creative, we need some mindsets and some settings where we can be creative again because I believe we can be all be creative but we lose some in the process. So I believe we have to have a sort of sandbox mindset to reconnect with your creativity through cer certain limitations. If we have a look at um, Orson Welles, he told us the enemy of art is the absence of limitations. I'll come back to that later. So, this is a sandbox. You all probably played in a sandbox. We remember this from our childhood. There is this space uh, surrounding us. There is just this limit of, well, maybe this red dot with sand in it. And when you put a child in there, or when you went there as a child, there were so many possibilities out there. There were so many things you could create with just the sand surrounding you. And maybe a little bit of tools like a bucket or a little shuffle. Um, but that was all we needed. So what happened was, the sandbox became our world, our focus. That was all that was, that was all what we needed. Um, so, because the child doesn't even think about um, fears or they don't think about what could happen or um, what should I make and what happens when I make this and what would other people think of it and there's no history of, of it so it turns into immediate creative action so there is an idea and it turns into action but there is no nothing else in between what happens when we grow older we are so um, we become aware of our surroundings, of what is expected from us, of um, what is art or what is not art, and what it means to be creative and what it means to be to do, to do just your daily job. So what happens is actually our creativity gets caged. 
So we lose, we lose our connection to our creativity because there are all these little thinking steps in between from this action or these ideas to the action. And this is not what we want to end up like, right? Like a little light bulb behind bars. So, but actually, when I asked this question myself, what can you make in one hour? I thought, oh, I can't do anything. It's just one hour and I have 15 seconds to think about it. Oh, that's just, wow. But, so that's what I thought. And I loved to draw as, when I was a child. But at a certain point, I wanted to draw, but I was looking at my surroundings and uh, I saw what other people were drawing. And actually, I wanted to create something beautiful, something like, like this, but then in my own drawing. And this is a picture, obviously. So I wanted to create this and be perfect in it. So what I actually did was all these pressures and things surrounding me. And I turned my creativity off, or at least part of it. And I, didn't, I stopped drawing and thought, OK, hell with the drawing. And I'll do some other stuff, which I'm hopefully better at. So this, this is supposed to be me. Yes. And what happened was my creativity got caged. So that's still not a good thing. But there are. I think, like I said, there are, we have all the possibility to be creative. But how? How can we do this? Um, I think it's about the setting, like I said before, or a certain mindset. And what we do have, well, we have a lot of things going on in our lives. And we do these daily mundane tasks. And we have these spaces surrounding us. But there is no direct uh, um, stimulating option to get tap into your creativity. For instance, if we look at, this is supposed to be a train. Can anyone of you recognize this as a train? <laughs> Terrific. So what happens in a train is you don't focus on the train as itself as a place to be. You want to go from point A to point B, and that's, that's it. And you can sit next to each other, like here, but close to close, shoulder, uh, shoulder to shoulder and never ever talk to the person next to you. And you, well actually you want to sit down, at least in the Netherlands, everyone, if there is an empty space or an empty um, compartment, then everyone's spreading out over, all over the um, compartment and be there as an individual. But, so this surroundings, you're not focused on this surrounding and you're not stimulated to be in a creative act and do something about it. But, um, so, and you also do not communicate with any of these people. Unless something happens, unless there is a common ground, like a delay from five minutes to three hours, you start talking to each other because you're annoyed and frustrated and you, and you want to share that together. You want to share that you're frustrated. And how do you do that? You start communicating with someone. So, there is a possibility to be communicating and be um, talking to each other but still not really a place where you are active in this creative process. Um, so wh where could we do this? And where is this already immediate um, talk to each other? If you look at the game shop, I worked in a game shop a while ago, and they had this lounge area. So everyone that was coming in there, the young people at least, they started talking to each other. They sat down, they played the games, so it was fun. And they started talking to each other and recognized each other. So there was this shared passion of games. There was, a community was formed. And they got inspired by the creative actions of other people, actually, of the game developers. So the people that actually make the games and the play, plays with it. So they, actually, they are playing with the creative inspiration of others. But still, they were not trying to create something themselves. So, still something else we need. If you look at TEDx, we hear your guard today, and we're sitting next to each other, well, you already engaged in some actions together, but um, you, we are here to get inspired, and uh, not directly to be creative, so there is this delay between the inspiration and the creative action that's happening. And, um, 
well, you should talk to each other and get inspired. But if you're a shy person like me, I won't get up to anyone and say, oh, I was so inspired today. What do you think of it? So still, there is, there is no direct communication, even though there is a common ground, because we are all inspired. So we still lack something to get into this creative action. So how do we get from inspiration to action? I want to have a, a small look to the game development. Who of you plays games? Oh, awesome. Great. So there are actually people making these games. And it's big business nowadays. Um, well, we all know film and things like that, but uh, games, game development is a big business. Um, and they can m make f these fantastic worlds and these um, stories that they make. And um, so we en can engage with that. And they have these, all these fantastic tools that they can work with and create something we actually like to play. But still, it's, uh, it's becoming commercial. So all the creative ideas, there is risk involved. So they start to be, become less risky and try all the um, paths that everyone knows. And, tr and they, so they don't take any risk any anymore, except for uh, a community that's starting to grow and grow even more every year, which is the game development, indie game development community. It's sort of like the indie um, music or arts, a, bit, a little bit underground, but they start to get above the underground nowadays. But what they do is, they want to try new things, have new stories, new, new ways of playing games. And um, what happens is that they actually talk to each other and share around the world together what they think. And, and so they communicate together. And there is this community that talks and shares, and so they get inspired by each other. So I argue, what if we could actually go to the Sandbox Plus, where we have people that have a common ground and play together and do new things together. And the sandbox mindset, which is all about playing, about, the, about these limitations that you have, um, but you still get very creative and have a little bit less steps between your actual ideas and the action. And game jams. Um, game jams are where the game developers come together, and also students and uh, amateur people, and people that like to uh, like games, and they come together in, for, for, uh, for example, 48 hours in the weekend or just one day, and they start making games. So they start with something, with nothing actually, and at the end of the weekend or a certain amount of time, they have created a game. But because it's so, so apart, set apart from their own. <laughs> Uh, world and their daily stuff, what is, go what is going on, they, um, they can focus really on what's there. So they can focus on the actual environment, they can focus on each other, they start collabor collaborating together. And what well, you can see here is a, a couple of pictures from um, the Global Game Jam in the Netherlands. And you see, well, different disciplinaries come together, uh, music and drawings and people that just have ideas or want to tell a story, and they all come together and connect with each other to make a game. So there's this limitation of 48 hours, there's this confined space where they're in, and they start creating something. And because there is no risk involved, because it's only 48 hours, you can create something new and try to um, talk to each other and just share all your ideas. So it's also very open. And you see here a couple of more that start to spread. A commu community starts to exist because other people ask other people, go draw some uh, pictures of us, of our own game, which is fan art, and um, communicate with us and start doing fun stuff together, all together. And some of the games you can see here, uh, the, actually, this one above on the left side is uh, from uh, Copenhagen, and uh, it's a really physical game. And then, of course, you can have mobile games or games uh, for the computer. So what I want to argue is an adapted Orson Welles is th the enemy of the creative mind is the absence of limitations, and not just of art. What happens at the game jam is you have a focus, 
pointed in a certain direction with a common theme or um, and you have a common goal because you all want to get together and create a game and something wonderful that everyone wants to play instead of just one lonely guy in the corner. Um, there is no risk involved at all and it's a multidisciplinary world so everyone can um, see the ideas of every other one and you have to work together to create something meaningful. A couple of examples of these game jams that are happening around the world. The Nordic Game Jam, which is started the worldwide and then it turned into a global game jam where about 1,500 people in the same weekend are all creating, the game, creating games all over the world. And Big Jam is in Germany where you have to have three days and in every three hours you need to turn in a game. So you don't have time to think. You just are creating, creating, creating. And in the end, something really innovative or special can be created. Not always, of course. So if we have a look at this, um, we have a sandbox and me, which is still no creative uh, action because we are individual. Then you have the train, which is all these individuals not con disconnected from each other, and it's very passive. So no creative action there. Then we have TEDx, which is all kinds of people together, and we come here to, for inspiration and passion, but no action, creative action. Then there's the game jam, with individual people coming together with the multidisciplinary world, and you get passion together, a common ground, and you get some creative action. And we should... I actually started participating in one instead of organizing what I normally do. And I rediscovered my own creative mind again because there was this limited amount of time. We had no artist, so who was going to be the artist? Me. So I tell you a secret, all the drawings were mine. And I used it at a TEDx talk. <laughs> yes, thank you. So ask yourself, what can't I do? Don't be afraid. Get them to do Sandbox Plus. Go ahead, try it together. Thank you.